Hey everybody, it's Dr. Ron. Uh, thanks for joining me. And if you're watching this on replay, um, thanks for watching on replay, but you're more than welcome to join me live by clicking the live notifications on the top right of this video. So today I'm going to be talking about a relatively controversial topic, and that topic uh, are statins. And statins are cholesterol-lowering medications, but there are a lot of unexpected side effects of these medications. Um, and some that are reported and some um, aren't because I really don't find out unless I specifically ask the patient how they're, how they're doing, which takes some conversation. And you guys know I'm all about conversation with my patients, right? So let's talk about this real quick. The, um, so statins have, are, are really, really heavily prescribed in the United States, okay? And they're heavily prescribed for, for multiple reasons. They've been, and uh, one big reason is that um, it lowers cholesterol, right? And cholesterol, I guess, is a, is a, has been demonized over the last few decades in the U.S. Like, um, you know, we associate with lower cholesterol of decreased cardiovascular risk for heart attacks, right? Well, is that really true? So that, that's really the first question that we ask. Is it really true? And does lowering cholesterol actually um, decrease rates of heart attack and strokes. And so th this is a, not an easy yes or no answer, but let's, let's take a look at exactly what this means. So the biggest risk factor for heart, heart disease and strokes is not cholesterol. It's insulin resistance. It's blood sugar, right? It's diabetes or prediabetes. Those are the biggest cardiovascular risks for anybody. So once again, it's sugar. It's not cholesterol. It's diabetes and prediabetes um, causing a lot of high inflammatory stress on the body and on the heart. That's what causes heart attack and strokes by far more than it's shown for LDL or bad cholesterol to cause it. So if that's true, why is there such an emphasis on lowering the bad cholesterol or the LDL with medication but not much of an emphasis on lowering the insulin resistance of somebody, which means cutting down the blood sugar. Why, why is that? And the, it's simply because of our culture, right? Our culture has demonized cholesterol as such a bad, bad thing. And most of my patients believe that cholesterol is the worst risk factor for heart disease. And it's absolutely not. And it's absolutely not. It is as insulin resistance. And so, but is it a risk factor for heart disease? Well, is it surprising to know that more than half the people who have heart attacks in this country have a normal cholesterol? More than half. I don't know. I have to look at the actual percentage, but it's, it's well above 50% have a normal cholesterol at the time they have a heart attack. Okay. And the other half with a high cholesterol is not even all that high. And there are a lot of people with um, hereditary high cholesterol who live a very long time. So how, how is this explained? So first of all, cholesterol is something that's needed in our body for our cell membranes to remain intact with each other, right? And so it's, it's something that, that our body actually needs, but if it's too high, is it, is it really a problem? And there's a lot of great areas and research studies um, that really are out there, okay? Um, but if more than 50% of the people in this country have heart attacks and normal cholesterol, how big of a risk factor really is cholesterol? If you, if you look at the people with heart attacks in this country, how many of those people have insulin resistance? Almost all of them have insulin resistance. Almost all of them have chronic inflammatory, um, um, either prediabetes or diabetes or some sort of insulin resistance. And that's the biggest risk factor by far. So understand this, undemonized cholesterol and demonized sugar, <laughs> undemonized cholesterol and demonize what really, really is, is causing the, the makeup of heart disease in this country, all right? Having said that, if you look at these people with heart attacks, the problem is not that their LDL or your bad cholesterol is high. The problem is that their good cholesterol is low or their HDL is low. That is a much higher predictor of heart attack and strokes in this country. So what makes the good cholesterol low? So, and that's the question we have to ask. And that's the question, that's the question we have to address. What is going to raise that LDL? And it's the food that we eat, 
and it's uh, it's decreasing insulin resistance, and it's movement and exercise. Okay, so now I'm going to get back to my talk about cholesterol and statins. So statins are cholesterol medicine that's used to lower the LDL, uh, which now we know is not that huge of a deal in people with heart attacks because more than 50% of the people with heart attacks in this country have a normal LDL. So let's look at why it's overprescribed. It's overprescribed because LDL is, is, is a number and a lot of cardiologists, a lot of uh, primary care docs are really terrified of it. They're really terrified of this, this LDL number. Um, it's more political than you think. Actually, there's actually Medicare guidelines that are out there for us to um, decrease LDL to a certain level, but there's no guidelines that are applicable to everybody to raise the HDL, which is exactly what we actually need to raise the good cholesterol. And there's a lot of hysteria behind, behind the cholesterol conspiracy, right? And, but that's just, that's just our culture. Now, if people are put on statins to lower LDL, the problem about statins with a cholesterol-lowering medication, as I, and, you know, as I addressed, is that statins has their own side effects, okay? And uh, most people know statin side effects as muscle cramping and pain, um, liver issues, could be liver toxic. And these are the two major side effects that people talk about. But there's a whole lot more out there that's in real life that I see on a daily basis. Okay, let's go over some of what those are. Um, number one, a lot of people who are on cholesterol medicine when they're elderly, when they're elderly, have big time memory problems. And they're not as active, they're way more fatigued. The way that cholesterol works is, is that there is a process where your muscles don't work as well when you're on the cholesterol medicine. And that's why they get a lot of the muscle pains, they get a lot of the fatigue. And that itself, that sensation of, of fatigue itself can cause depression. It can cause memory deficits. It can cause them to sleep all the time. It can cause them to be very inactive, which can lead to type 2 diabetes or prediabetes, right? And that's shown. I mean, this is shown that there's a huge association with statins or cholesterol medicine to increase the risk of worsening type 2 diabetes, right? So, it's, so, so if, statins, if statins cause a lot of pain and fatigue, and that causes a sedentary lifestyle for people, it's not surprising, it's not surprising that people are not gonna eat well, they're not gonna move around, it's gonna worsen, worsen these things. So this is not a very surprising thing, right? And, um, and when we look at a lot of the elderly population and for them being on these cholesterol medicines, um, why are they on it in the first place? Now, if they're on cholesterol medicine because they've had a heart attack or they had a stroke before, then these cholesterol medicines are shown to decrease the risk of a repeat heart attack and stroke. And that's absolutely true. And I do use cholesterol medicine in these people. However, they have no history or no other risk factors for them to have a heart attack and stroke and they just have elevated LDL, elevated bad cholesterol, then I really look at the good cholesterol to see if that's also high. If that's also high, I'm not really worried. I don't put a lot of these people on cholesterol medicine because, because of these issues. But that's something for, if you are on cholesterol medicine, you don't do anything crazy. You gotta talk to your doctor about it before making any decisions about taking the medicine or not. If you, if you don't, I'll be really mad at you. So please talk to your physician about your medicines before you make any changes whatsoever, okay? Because everybody's different. This is not a blanket statement. Everybody's different. This is just something to educate you to understand something about cholesterol medicine, right? And looking at cholesterol medicines, and the reason I tell you that story is because um, I have patients who come in and I take them off of cholesterol medicine and they're, and they're, and they're elderly, and all of a sudden they're you know, what was thought to be Alzheimer's dementia is really just the side effects of cholesterol medicine. And a lot of people who are, who are elderly develop Parkinsonism, which means it's like a, uh, it's a tremor that mimics Parkinson's disease. A lot of them get better as well because they have a full use of their muscles. They're not depressed on their muscle functions as well. So it's very interesting what happens. And they get less depressed, right? And when they get less depressed, they want to do things. And when they want to do things, the depression is gone. And depression causes something called pseudo-dementia, where we think they're demented, but really they're just depressed. 
And so, voila, right? They, they, their clarity is up. They're less depressed. They want to move more. All right. And you know, grandpa and grandpa is not as not as um, <laughs> not as demented as we thought. And in the end, it, it just turned out to be cholesterol medicine, right? And so, and so understanding you know, what you take um, as medicine is, is seriously important, especially with cholesterol medicine, right? But once again, if somebody already has coronary disease, somebody already has cardiac disease or, or strokes in the past, um, they should be on cholesterol medicine to prevent another one, and that's, that's, you know, that's documented to be, to be shown, right? With one exception. And the exception is if someone is in their later stages of life and they're elderly and they've had heart attacks and strokes in the past, but they're living a very depressed life, the quality of life is not very good, then yeah, I would take them off of cholesterol medicine because quality of life is more important than preventing them from having another heart attack and stroke in their minds. And I tell them that. I tell them, what would you like me to do? Would you want to continue to have a protective factor in this medicine for you to have heart attack and strokes? Or is it worth it to have muscle pains? Is it worth it to have this fatigue? And I'll tell you what, most people would just say, Doc, I'll take my chances and I'll get off of it. All right? But everybody's different. Everybody's different. And you can, I cannot make a decision for somebody else. I can just inform them of what they should know to make a decision to, to better their lives. And that is the most important. That is, that, is, that is why a conversation with your physician is far more important than any prescriptions. It's because of this exact reason, the quality of life, right? And so the, another point about cholesterol medicine is that cholesterol medicine has been shown to decrease um, the ability for the muscle to contract fully and therefore decrease exercise capacity um, by, by a marginal percent, okay? It's not, it's not dramatic. It's by a marginal percent, uh, even those without, without muscle pains or fatigue. So why is that important? Well, if people can't exercise to the fullest potential, then shouldn't that also contribute to insulin resistance? Meaning that shouldn't, shouldn't that, and, and what I mean is that um, if they can't have full muscle contractility, they can't burn the sugar that they already ingest into their body, all right? And so that's another, that's another, that's another thing to, to understand. So for those people who have high cholesterol, and especially if you're young, in the younger population, you want to do something about it, you have to eat the right way, right? You have to eat the right way um, instead of taking medicines. But that, once again, that's really up to you and your conversation with your physician, right? But, you know, the way I approach cholesterol, I looked at HDL, the, the good cholesterol, much more than the LDL, right? But even before that, I look at insulin resistance. I look at what their average blood sugar is over three months, it's called the hemoglobin A1C test. And I look at their body type. I look at what they eat. Um, they have to tell me what they eat. That is super important. And then I determine a risk based on that so that I, they can make an informed decision. Right? Decreasing insulin resistance or decreasing the blood sugar in somebody is far more important than decreasing the LDL or decreasing the cholesterol. All right? And that's that's just the that's just that's just the end of the statement. So, but you know, understand that this is educational. Um, if you're on these medicines, please consult with your physician. This is not something to be taken lightly because every case is different. Okay, if you find this to be valuable, please share this in your feed. All right. And so, in conclusion, how do you know? Well, whether it's, it's, it's good or bad to get on or get off of cholesterol medicine, have a conversation with your doc doctor. Understand your own risk factors for developing heart disease and stroke and know the side effects of the medicines that you may be on and know what you can do to decrease your risk factors for heart disease and stroke naturally using all that and then make a decision of what you want to do. All right? Thank you, everybody, for listening. Share this on your feed. I would love for you to. Thank you.